What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Elite Blaster Rack. This is a Nerf branded plastic shelf or blaster rack for your Nerf blasters. Is it worth a $50 retail price? Let's explore it to find out. Included are all of the components required to assemble the rack. This certainly is not some assembly required. This is full assembly, like you're assembling an Ikea furniture piece. The assembly process took me about 20 or 25 minutes to do by myself. I'm sure if you were in it to win it, trying to go really fast, you could get it done in maybe 15 minutes, but I wasn't. I was just relaxing, assembling the rack. The assembly is guided by the included instruction manual, and it is in proper English, not the Ikea English style. You know, grammar, spelling, coherent sentences, that type of thing. So we'll go over the external features of the blaster rack, starting up at the front. Unfortunately, it is not equipped with an in-strike barrel attachment lug. Okay, I'll stop. This isn't a blaster, so this review is gonna be kind of weird. <laughs> First, starting out with the side. Now, these little contraptions are pretty cool. It's modeled after an in-strike tactical rail, but it's pretty clever how the system is pretty much a male next to a female next to a male. So you can attach in-strike attachments or blasters using their in-strike rails. It can go either way. Six of these orange panels are included with the product and it has five locations on each side. So you can put these little uh, orange panels wherever you'd like, really. While you can technically remove them to move them into a different slot, once they're in there, I had to kind of destroy mine to get it out, so it's really not designed to be easily flippable. So once you hook this orange panel in, it's kind of wherever you put it. As you can see, on both sides, I've kind of put it into the 135 locations, which are just like outsides plus the middle. Each of these orange panels has a number of rail slots, so you can put on a bunch of different attachments, or in between the, the male rail slots, as I mentioned, is sort of a female, so you can slide in a blaster. Assuming that blaster has an in-strike tactical rail, and assuming the orange orientation of the blaster will allow you to set that rail into this little slot. For example, if you wanted to attach to strife, you can do it this way, but if you tried to use this rail, it, it won't work that way. So lots of different attachment possibilities with this, and to fit different blasters, you can set these little orange panels wherever you'd like. I certainly haven't explored every possibility of attachment for these side panels. It's kind of open to your preference and whatever blasters you're trying to hook into this blaster rack. In addition to connecting by the rail, they also have these little hooks included, which slide onto the rails pretty easily. And once they're hooked onto the rail, it acts like a normal hook, so you can attach anything, like a jolt by the trigger guard, or any blaster that doesn't have an in-strike rail that you want to attach to the side. Or anything with a strap, like goggles, or little pouches, or bags, maybe tactical gear that you just want to hook onto the side of the blaster rack. Hooks are pretty common in home storage because you can put, you know, your car keys or a coat or just anything because a hook, I mean, anything that fits on a hook will fit. So that's enough about hooks. R. Get it like Captain Hook? I'll stop. Next is the main blaster rack area. Now this is kind of where I envision you put your primaries or your larger blasters that don't really fit appropriately on the side. So you can get your blaster and set it up like that. Well, bam You can do muzzle down, muzzle up, magwell, in or out, whatevs, whatever works for your blasters. And the little orange panels will slide out fairly easily to make room for a larger fat blaster. In my opinion, these little orange panels could be a little bit longer when I was dealing with some fatter blasters or stuff with like attachments. The blasters wanted to tip over a little bit. And I felt if this was a, just a little bit longer to give more separation between the blasters, it would hold those blasters in a little bit more steady. That problem is especially true with blasters with a lot of batteries, like the Nemesis that I put in here. That has six D alkaline batteries, which is just a lot of weight. and that kind of stresses the plastic a little bit. If you're using lighter blasters without batteries or, you know, just low mass in general, uh, these should work, but they're just not as sturdy as they could be. This little bar is kind of annoying, in my opinion, but kind of necessary because this is plastic. This is kind of a reinforcement bar to make sure this panel doesn't fall over. It's not a big deal right now when it's empty, but when you hang a bunch of blasters here, this is just a support beam, kind of. But I found it kind of annoying. Um, if you don't want to lift it completely out, then you end up doing one of these ninja tucks like that. I find it a little frustrating, but don't be tempted to pull it out because then you're, you're rack will just like collapse. It is a pretty cool little modular storage area, um, but it's pretty simple to understand. So that's it for that. Now moving to the shelves. Now these top two little compartments are just really basic shelves or cubbies. You just put stuff in there. And in the back, there's some like mesh back there to make sure if you put like a magazine too far, it won't fall out the back, which is a good idea. Not a whole lot to say about the shelves because they're just shelves. Uh, whatever you want to put in there will work. Maybe stick magazines or like pistols that you don't really want to side set up on the side rack or like tactical gear, whatever. This whole thing is kind of set up to be modular, so it'll fit whatever gear you have instead of being specifically designed for one rig or one setup. And down below we have a little pull-out drawer, which I think is pretty much the only place you can safely store ammo in this blaster rack if you want to keep your ammo with your blasters. And it is the only concealed storage area in the whole rack, which is interesting. Uh, they were going for like a skeleton look because you can see through the back, you can see through the sides, and they even went to the mesh instead of a solid backing back here. And the Amazon pictures presented an opaque gray, a clear or translucent orange, as well as this opaque orange. I guess they photographed different prototypes. I thought they might include like different panels so you can choose. 
I, I only got the one opaque orange right here. Not a complaint, just thought it was interesting. A lot of the photos online were like of different models, whatevs. In case it's not like super obvious, this is a plastic shelf. It doesn't have like a ball bearing uh, rack system or anything like that. If you just put like Nerf darts in it, it's completely fine. But if you load it up with a whole bunch of weight, it will drag and it won't work like a normal drawer in your house. For a $50 toy rack like this that's made out of plastic, it could be obvious. I think it should be obvious. But just to calibrate your expectations, this is a toy grade rack. It's not like, you know, like actual furniture. And ending with the other side panel, it is identical to this side. Uh, it has the same orange paneling. It includes six total orange panels, so you can put three on each side or five and one or whatever you want. But I don't need to go over that again because it is the exact same as this one. That is the product overview for the Nerf Elite Blaster Rack. Now to my opinion. This opinion is mostly just to calibrate your expectations. Everybody kind of knows what they're expecting when they purchase a Nerf Blaster. So my opinion is typically received the same way everywhere. But if I say this is an awesome blaster rack or this is total crap, it completely depends what you're expecting out of it. Because it's plastic and because it's only $50, your expectations could be all over the place. So it's plastic. If you're used to like Ikea furniture, even something made out of like MDF, which isn't like a high quality, really sturdy material, but compared to plastic, MDF is like steel, like pretty strong. So if you're expecting something like that and you want a rough house with this product, you might be disappointed. It is plastic, it is flimsy, but it works for what it's trying to do. If they made this thing out of metal, they would have to charge like $200 for the exact same product, and I think it would just be overkill. If you're not using really heavy Nerf blasters, like if you don't have battery powered ones like the Nemesis, and you don't store them with the batteries in, you don't really need that extra reinforcement. So my expectations were personally met when I purchased this product for 50 US dollars. Will I personally be using it? Not as much. I have a giant Nerf arsenal and I have to go pretty, I mean, I have a whole room dedicated in my home to storing Nerf blasters and like film gear and all of the stuff I have for YouTube. So the display and the beauty of my display is a lower tier than just getting everything into one room and being able to find it quickly, like with my labeled totes. But I'm not trying to repel anybody that has a giant Nerf arsenal because even if you have like a million Nerf blasters, you probably only regularly use less than 10. Like realistically. So this would be a great way to store what you regularly use. And then if you need to go like beyond this, you can go to your auxiliary storage, like your closet or your playroom or whatever. So to the purchase recommendation, if you're looking for a way to store a smallish amount of Nerf blasters, like less than 20, and show them off, I would recommend this purchase. If you have a lower budget and you don't really care about displaying your blasters, $50 is a lot to spend on something that doesn't happen to fling foam. So if you're still building up your Nerf collection or you just don't care about the stylish way to display your blasters, I would recommend no, don't purchase this one. Save that money and put it into more ammo or different blaster or something else that could fill out your actual arsenal instead of the display slash storage mechanism. Next, if you're a crazy collector and you have hundreds and hundreds of Nerf blasters and you're looking for the most space efficient way to store your Nerf blasters, no, I would not recommend this pr product to you either. Like I mentioned, it's not the most space efficient way to store your blasters. It's a more beautiful way, but it's not the most space efficient. Overall, I think it's a well-executed product. It's designed and manufactured well, and it met my expectations for that 50 US dollar price tag. But it's plastic, it has limitations. Uh, I think an MDF or a metal comparison, like if Ikea came out with something similar to this, it might cost, you know, $200. Sure, that could hold heavier blasters and it might look cool, um, you know, being metal instead of plastic, um, but it's, you know, quite a bit more expensive. So if you calibrate your expectations, I think it's a well-executed product and I think it's a fair purchase. So that's it for the Blaster Rack review by Nerf. And it is branded with Nerf, which, you know, bonus points, style points, whatevs. Kind of a weird review for my channel, but I saw this on Amazon. I was like, that's pretty cool. I know my viewers are gonna ask me about it. So decided to make a review anyways. Hopefully it was helpful with the potential purchase of the Blaster Rack. If you'd like to buy one, I'll leave a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, bros, stay tactical.